All right, so time for uh, case number three. The Mystified Murderous. Being in a new game. Society burglar strikes again. Mm, series of burglaries. Six over the period from June 2nd to June 17th. On July 2nd, the 7th occurred at the home of Sir Sanford Leeds. Cleopatra Tiara stolen, says. As in the other cases, uh, no sign of extensive search by the thief and only one piece of jewelry involved. Victims elsewhere at the time. Here's a complete list of the particulars, Holmes, if you'd care to read it. I believe you'll find him in the study. How do you do, gentlemen? I am Gerald Locke. Well, please be seated, Mr. Locke. How can we be of service? Three days ago, Guy Clarendon was found murdered at Halliday's. It's preposterous, but Miss Frances Nolan has been charged and is being detained at the criminal court, Old Bailey. Frances Nolan? Ah, yes. Sister of Loretta Nolan. The only surviving heirs of Sir Malcolm Nolan, founder of the Aberdeen Navigation Company. I seem to recall that Sir Malcolm and Lady Nolan were killed when some lunatic threw a bomb into their carriage. It seems to me that later I heard something about it being a case of mistaken identity. Wasn't one of their little offspring in the carriage with them at the time? Yes, it was Loretta, Francis's sister. She was only four. Miraculously, she was uninjured. Mr. Locke, I've heard that you are a suitor for Miss Francis Nolan's hand, are you not? Yes. And was it not also true that she was being courted by Guy Clarendon? Unfortunately, yes. Have you any idea why Frances Nolan was charged with the crime? Ah, uh, well, she was discovered over the body with a pistol in her hand. That would do it. But you don't understand. Frances is totally incapable of murder, not even of a scoundrel such as Guy Clarendon. Scoundrel? But he's from such blue blood. Also, if I'm not mistaken, he's an accomplished batsman for the West London Cricketeers. A ranked fencer in international competition. He was also a bit of a bounder, Watson. What an understatement. Guy Clarendon was excessively fond of cards and strong drink. His father had all but disinherited him. I tried to tell Francis that Clarendon was no good, but to no avail. And now look at the mess she's in. Will you help? Most certainly. <laughs> All right, I kind of want to watch that again because I need to like reorganize the notes. So we got two suitors for Francis Nolan, and then we got Guy Clarendon, who's the other suitor, and he was the one that was murdered. So I need, I need to rearrange this. Um... Okay, so uh, Gerald Locke is the client. Uh, Clarendon was murdered at Holidays. Is that like a tavern? We gotta find out. Okay, so no one's in the one charge, so we probably have to exonerate her and find out who actually did it. Yeah, the whole thing with the family getting killed, it's tough to like follow all of this while also taking notes. Okay, that can actually stay there. Okay. So they're actually both suitors for Nolan, uh, for Francis. She had the gun over body. Was found standing over body with gun. Um, okay, he's the batsman. I'm sure we're going to have to go to the West London Cricketeers because I saw that as a directory entry on the prior cases. And then this is also, we don't really know much about Gerald Locke, to be honest. Okay. Let's uh, let's watch that opening scene again. Society burglar strikes again. Mm, series of burglaries. Six over the period from June 2nd to June 17th. On July 2nd, the 7th occurred at the home of Sir Sanford Leeds. Cleopatra Tiara stolen, it says. As in the other cases, uh, no sign of extensive search by the thief, and only one piece of jewelry involved. Victims elsewhere at the time. Here's a complete list of the particulars, Holmes, if you'd care to read it. I believe you'll find him in the study. How do you do, gentlemen? I am Gerald Locke. Well, please be seated, Mr. Locke. How can we be of service? Three days ago, Guy Clarendon was found murdered at Halliday's. It's preposterous. But Miss Frances Nolan has been charged 
and is being detained at the criminal court, Old Bailey. Francis Nolan. Ah, yes. Sister of Loretta Nolan. The only surviving heirs of Sir Malcolm Nolan, founder of the Aberdeen Navigation Company. I seem to recall that Sir Malcolm and Lady Nolan were killed when some lunatic threw a bomb into their carriage. It seems to me that later I heard something about it being a case of mistaken identity. Wasn't one of their little offspring in the carriage with them at the time? Yes, it was Loretta, Francis's sister. She was only four. Miraculously, she was uninjured. Mr. Locke, I've heard that you are a suitor for Miss Francis Nolan's hand, are you not? Yes. And was it not also true that she was being courted by Guy Clarendon? Unfortunately, yes. Have you any idea why Francis Nolan was charged with the crime? Ah, uh, well, she was discovered over the body with a pistol in her hand. That would do it. But you don't understand. Francis is totally incapable of murder, not even of a scoundrel such as Guy Clarendon. A scoundrel? But he's from such blue blood. Also, if I'm not mistaken, he's an accomplished batsman for the West London Cricketeers, a ranked fencer in international competition. He was also a bit of a bounder, Watson. What an understatement. Guy Clarendon was excessively fond of cards and strong drink. His father had all but disinherited him. I tried to tell Francis that Clarendon was no good, but to no avail. And now look at the mess she's in. Will you help? Most certainly. Well, why was she even with him is the other question. We'll have to find out. Odd top and gambo specialize in Baccarat. Baccarat gives some of the best odds. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry. I thought I heard cards. Yeah, he said it was cards, not cars. Typo, typo. All right, so let's look at the newspapers. Uh, we should find out more details about the cat burglar or society burglars. So same dates again as with all of them. All right, so we know to skip all of the, the births or not anything. So we're looking for Guy Clarendon, Nolan, Locke, etc. cetera. We have the marriages. Okay, this is all the same. I've seen that. Okay, Lyons murdered. Jeffrey Worlison. Okay, William Aspinall and John Lowe. Okay, Barry O'Neill, the accident of the docks. We've seen that before, all of that before. Recent disturbance in Whitechapel. Okay, let's check the right column now. Okay, excavations in Egypt, that was case one. Law notices, this day Friday. Okay, yeah, we've seen that before. The railway company, Chatham and Dover, further hearing. Judicial committee, we've seen that before. Kekwich, we've seen the guano versus the sewage manure company. Mysterious death, we've seen Stephen Lyons before. Okay, so nothing, at least at the moment, is related in this edition. Really? Bakrat Sandal is a huge deal where people caught cheating? An international tournament? Okay, burglaries. To the editor of the Times, sir, the press and the public generally should force our timid halting officials to take energetic action against certain forms of crime. May I suggest that one, any person committing a bur burglary or robbery from the person accompanied by violence or brutality be flogged. Two, any burglar or other thief having upon him a revolver or other distinctly murderous weapon be flogged. Three, the police force be increased, especially mounted patrols in certain localities. Four, certain constables be armed with revolvers. Five, the police generally have a freer hand in dealing with crimes of robbery, robbery or violence. Six, more activity among the members of the police force by insisted on by the chief commissioner. Again, problems with the writing. The police should be officially informed as to the legality or otherwise of using firearms in defense of their lives and property. Experience shows, however, the futility of expecting the authorities ever to take the lead in these matters. They never do anything until forced. Yours faithfully, one of the public. So now they're allowing people to write anonymous letters. Retraction. Yesterday's paper we mistakenly reported Jess Fryer had died. He is alive and well. <laughs> Her apologies. Okay, we got a death here. We've seen that one before. Seen that in memoriam. On, on the 17th of August, 1888, fell asleep after ra rapid consumption. You're reporting in March over d of the death in August at Bournemouth, Margaret Louisa Gretchen, the dearly beloved and only daughter of Mrs. Mona Louisa Hanna, greatly mourned and most loving memory, A.E.L. Oh, oh involved important people. 
Wow, a future king? Damn. And a lieutenant general. Interesting. Oh. Okay, Little Egypt makes a hit. Last night, the Tivoli was the scene of a novel d divertisement. Little Egypt, that agile and beautiful exponent of the graceful, sensuous oriental Dans du Ventre, entertained all present with her lithesome swaying buddy. A nimble finger pianist who was up in profane music sounded the opening chords of the wicked dance, and with writhing and twisting buddy, Little Egypt stepped out the measure while all the men looked on with open-mouthed astonishment. Louder and louder banged the piano. More and more rapidly, the abdominal, abdominal muscles of the dancer twitched. Her eyes gleamed with the excitement of it all, and her bosom heaved with tantalizing irregularity. With a crash of chords, the dance ceased, and the men were left with silence broken only by long, drawn-out sighs from a couple of the gentlemen. Little Egypt has come to England by way of Egypt and Syria. Vague rumors persist that she was deported for illegal political activities in those countries, but quite a few Englishmen are glad to have her here. So it's like a belly dancer? Everyone's been titillated by? Yeah, almost spilled my water. Yes, irregular bosom heaving. Uh, cheater demanded his agreement not to play cards be rescinded. It leaked out. Oh, wow. Okay, killed by lightning, William Breeze, age 15, a laborer, was yesterday struck by lightning and instantly killed at Spalding during a thunderstorm. He was working in the hayfield. Wow. Okay, this looks pertinent. Oldenburg jewels stolen. Oldenburg, okay, that was the July 2nd. Yeah. Uh, the jewels of the Duchess of Oldenburg were stolen. Wait, I thought only the tiara was stolen. Uh, from the residence schloss. Residence Schloss. Yesterday after late yesterday afternoon, sentries guarding the jewels left their posts when smoke began billowing from a small room adjacent to that in which the treasure was kept. The fire had apparently been caused by a smoke bomb used by the thief. Okay. Smoke bomb. The police admit to a few other clues but have closed the borders as a first precautionary step. The borders of the country based on a jewel theft? Are you kidding? They've also detained several internationally suspected criminals, including Helmut Schnitzler and Thomas O'Neill, but found no evidence to hold them. Okay. Sus suspects. Helmut Schnitzler. Thomas O'Neill. Not to be confused with the Barry O'Neill lion tamer. Okay. Now, Lieutenant Colonel. Yeah, it's quite... Be careful of that lightning. All right. Um, yeah, we've seen all of that Fitchett stuff. Live ostriches we've seen. Isle of Man we've seen. Pedigrees and family. Miscellaneous. Pedigrees and family history is compiled from the most undoubted authority, James Philip 13 Newcourt. Lincoln's Inn. Oh, no, I think we've seen. Yeah, we've seen all that before, actually. The four men that were drowned. The small force. Uh, oh, is this bugged? I think this is bugged. Yeah, this is the bugged one again. You have to click the opposite direction. Queen Anne statue. Oh, we've seen that before. Francis Bird, the sculptor. Okay. Check the right side. All right, we've every every case seems to have the Nikola, Nikolai Gorsky murder. Murder in Bloomsbury. We've seen that before. Oswald Mason. Entertainment. Uh, I think, we, yeah, we've seen that before. Oh, it bugged. Okay, Oxford Music Hall. We've seen that. New Features for 1890. We've seen that. Irish, Irish Exhibition. We've seen that. All right, nothing else. Okay. Um, next page. Was that? That was April, right? Yeah. All right, last one was April 12th here. Personal and see parks not. You promised on your honor to communicate in August. Why find me out to torture me thus? Trusting you as you asked, I have made engagements I cannot fulfill. Mind and body, I am seriously ill. So I deserve all this from you? Any, anyhow, tell me the worst. Suspense is torture and not like you. Okay, we got the lions murdered. Ooh. Society burglar still at large. 
After a month of jewelry burglaries from some of London's most fashionable homes, Scotland Yard reports little progress in the identification and apprehension of the so-called so society burglary. The latest, uh, the victim of the latest theft, latest Lady Leeds. Oh, so this is a different one. So there were two of them on July 2nd? Wait a minute. But this this newspaper's dated April 12th. Man, they have all sorts of like bad, <laughs> oh, all sorts of bad errors in the writing here that don't make sense. I mean, for a game that's based on deduction and stringing the facts together to get critical things wrong and your newspaper and I don't think it's just <laughs> pretty sloppy and inexcusable. All right. Um, the victim of the latest theft, Lady Leeds, has become so overwrought by the invasion of her bedroom by this unknown man and by the loss of her prized diamond tiara that she has been hospitalized with the suggestion of her physician. Hospitalized. Okay. Uh, it's a diamond tiara. I saw Stanford. Maybe that's her husband's name. Although any impetus to attach the increasing problem of crime should be welcomed, it is unfortunate that the impetus comes more strongly when the class of victims is expanded. Oh, oh it's not about factual information. It's They're reporting on July burglaries in April <laughs> before it even happened. Oh, man. It's just that the game is messing this shit up. Um, to the editor of the time, sir, surely it is time that some effectual steps should be taken to curb the ambition of our burglars, be they society or not. And if necessary, by legislation. Prevention is better than cure, and I agree with those who think that a fox terrier in the house is the best means of giving the alarm. But something more than a dog is required, I would suggest the cat, besides penal servitude in all cases of burglary, whether the burglars succeed in carrying away anything or not. Oh, so even like attempted burglary would be, yeah, a, a jail sentence. The cat in the sense in which I refer to it has been the most successful as a deterrent in case of personal robbery with a violence and other crimes. Why should it not be at once applied to our burglars whose calling necessarily involves personal violence? Your obedient servant, HTB. Okay, so we have an HTB editorial. Uh... We'll see if that connects with any of the characters. Uh, that's not a Nolan or Locke or Clarendon. Okay. Through the right side. Oh, that was. All right. Uh, this is the Mummy Murders. That's from case one. This shipping intelligence we've seen before. Uh, recent Mummy Affair. Giant build like Trent. Foreign arrivals we've seen. Fatal accident. Wait a minute. What the hell? Did the. Did this just, this is the different version of this paper. What is going on here? Something's bugged here. We were supposed to have another jewelry article. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Society burglar, take climbs to 14,000 pounds. That elusive and so far successful burglar, commonly known as the society burglar, has gotten away with jewels valued at 14,000 pounds by the seven victims to date. Okay. So this is um, 14,000 pounds over seven burglaries. Speculation continues as to the identity of the burglar who seems to be acquainted with the various and sometimes ingenious hiding places of his victim's jewels. The other striking aspects of the modus operandi are the taking of only one select peach each time and the occurrence of all thefts when the victims are not at home. Okay. One piece stolen only owners not at home we have provided for the interest of our readers a list of the various jewels stolen and their values okay good so june 2nd r baker diamond stick pin 500 uh june 5th hardinge emerald bracelet 1500 June 8th, oops, June 8th, um, Richmond, diamond bracelet, 2000, so each time it's more, oh no, okay, June 11th, B. Lewin, 
Ruby earrings. 1,000. Uh, June 15th, dearth. Diamond necklace. 3,000. June 17th, Judd. Diamond pendant. 1,000. Oh, now they're saying it's July 1st, not the 2nd. Dude, get your back straight. I don't know why I heard Stanford. Leeds, Diamond Tiara. Oh, 5,000. So that was the biggest heist. Okay. But then what about these jewels of the Duchess of Oldenburg? Is that someone else? Hmm. All right. Um... Oh, yeah, we've seen that before. Clarendon Books, Holiday Apartments, seen that before. Norse Hotel, we've seen that before. All right, so that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get an initial save here, why not? Probably just the starting. Okay. So we got uh, pen, mortar and pestle. Uh, book and mail. All right. So I guess we should start by going. Uh, well, we're trying to solve the murder, not the burglaries. I'm sure they might inter, they'll interweave, but we should start off by visiting uh, where he was killed, which would have been um, holidays, which isn't even here. What is holidays? Oh, Halliday's private hotel. Okay. There we go. This place shall be burglarized in the future. Double plus on good. Who's wearing the what now? Clarendon, poor chap. He arrived on the 29th day of May and was given a front room on the third floor. Two days later, he asked to be moved to suite 205. To your knowledge, did he have any visitors? Only two that I'm aware of. One was a most disagreeable fellow. He was rather large, had a thick walrus moustache, and a very prominent scar down his cheek. He arrived on the 1st of June, well, the very day of Mr. Clarendon's move. He simply came in, sat down in the lobby, and waited. Twenty minutes or so later, Mr. Clarendon came down from his room. The big man yanked him aside. I was about to send for a bobby when Mr. Clarendon signed me that all was well. After a few minutes, they left together. I never saw the man again. His other visitor, who came by quite frequently, was a most striking woman. She was quite fashionably dressed. She had a most distinctive laugh, very full and deep. I've no idea who she was. Please, uh, tell us about the morning of July 2nd. It was about nine o'clock when a woman entered. She was rather plain looking and I wouldn't have noticed her, except for the fact that she came in the front door, looking neither left nor right, and proceeded directly up the staircase. It couldn't have been more than 30 seconds later when I heard a bang, followed by a woman's scream. I dashed upstairs to the second floor. The door to room 205 was open. Inside, I found the body of Mr. Clarendon and the woman who'd just come up. She was lying in a swoon in the center of the room with a pistol in her hand. I revived her with some whiskey. When she came to, she was totally disoriented. She had no idea where she was or what she'd done. When she saw Clarendon's body, she let out a shriek and dropped the pistol. I summoned the police. Tell me, at what hour are the hotel's front doors locked? Oh, 10 o'clock, sir. Hmm. Anyone who arrives after that has to be let in by the night staff. Of course, Mr. Clarendon was never one of those. He was always in his room before 10. May we see his room? What are we here, Watson? Appears to be a bank statement. Oh, look here, Holmes. It appears the maid missed a spot in her sweeping. Good thing she did, Watson. You're staring at evidence. Hmm. Blood. What's this stain here? 
Smells like a fine sherry. Looks like someone's been celebrating. The question is, was it with the body or over it? Nothing much here. A couple of shirts and uh, three pair of shoes. But what you fail to notice, my dear Watson, is that one of the pairs of shoes is canvas and has been dyed black. Interesting. A sweater and trousers. An ensemble in black. Not much of a view. All I can see is a brick wall of the building across the alley. Hmm. Ivy Vines binding up a trellis. So that, that was the mo mode of escape for the actual killer. Um, so it looks like that bank statement had probably the jewel prices, suggesting that maybe Guy Clarendon was the uh, society burglar. So maybe whoever killed him, killed him out of revenge for heisting their jewels. Um, the crappy thing is, like, whenever you, like, see a paper document like that, it should go into your notes for future reference. You shouldn't have to watch the video again to see that again. But I suppose we're going to have to do that just so we can ascertain that it matches up with our, like, ledger of the stolen goods and their value. Clarendon, poor chap. He arrived on the 29th day of May and was given a front room on the third floor. Two days later, he asked to be moved to suite 205. To your knowledge, did he have any visitors? Only two that I'm aware of. One was a most disagreeable fellow. He was rather large, had a thick walrus mustache, and a very prominent scar down his cheek. He arrived on the 1st of June, well, the very day of Mr. Clarendon's move. He simply came in, sat down in the lobby, and waited. Twenty minutes or so later, Mr. Clarendon came down from his room. The big man yanked him aside. I was about to send for a bobby when Mr. Clarendon signed me that all was well. After a few minutes, they left together. I never saw the man again. His other visitor, who came by quite frequently, was a most striking woman. She was quite fashionably dressed. She had a most distinctive laugh, very full and deep. I've no idea who she was. Please, uh, tell us about the morning of July 2nd. It was about nine o'clock when a woman entered. She was rather plain looking and I wouldn't have noticed her, except for the fact that she came in the front door, looking neither left nor right, and proceeded directly up the staircase. It couldn't have been more than 30 seconds later when I heard a bang, followed by a woman's scream. I dashed upstairs to the second floor. The door to room 205 was open. Inside, I found the body of Mr. Clarendon and the woman who'd just come up. She was lying in a swoon in the center of the room with a pistol in her hand. I revived her with some whiskey. When she came to, she was totally disoriented. She had no idea where she was or what she'd done. When she saw Clarendon's body, she let out a shriek and dropped the pistol. I summoned the police. Tell me, at what hour are the hotel's front doors locked? Oh, I like to look at the camera. Sir. Mm. Anyone who arrives after that has to be let in by the night staff. Of course, Mr. Clarendon was never one of those. He was always in his room before 10. Look at Shark's face goes white. He's like, really? His room? Moments later. I like this interstitial. What do we hear, Watson? Appears to be a bank statement. Oh, look here, Holmes. It appears the maid missed a spot in her sweeping. Good thing she did, Watson. You're staring at evidence. Hmm. Blood. What's this stain here? Smells like a fine sherry. Looks like someone's been celebrating. The question is, was it with the body or over it? Hmm. Nothing much here. A couple of shirts and uh, three pair of shoes. But what you failed to notice, my dear Watson, is that one of the pairs of shoes is canvas and has been dyed black. Interesting. A sweater and trousers. An ensemble in black. Here's Not the, much of a view. The burglar. All I can see is a brick wall of the building across the alley. Hmm. Ivy Vines binding up a trellis. Hmm, Ivy Vines. Okay, um, so yeah, I, I don't think actually the price list mass, I mean, again, it was only up for like two seconds. I should have screenshotted it, but uh, I don't think it matched exactly, but it's probably close enough. We're probably not supposed, I mean, 
If you were supposed to get everything, they would have allowed you to. Oh, awesome. Thank you, soldier. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so 5,000 June 1st. Yeah, that does not match up. 500 June 13th. Oh, I see. So the first, the left half is uh, withdrawals and the right half is, um, I'm sorry, the left half is deposits, the right half is withdrawals. So May 30th, he withdraws 5,000. I mean, assuming it's him, it's the Bank of London. The interesting statement of transactions, there's no like account number. Uh, so yeah, these things don't match up exactly but maybe we end up going to the bank of london to like ask them more about it all right so next step we should probably be going to the old bailey to talk to francis norton i should think and here's probably where we're going to see uh edward hall because maybe he's going to be the lawyer representing her or something like that so let's next go to the uh old bailey see if we can see francis nolan i understand that wilfred robards is considering taking miss nolan's case he might be able to help you. If you'd like, I can arrange an interview with Frances Nolan. She's being held downstairs, you know. We might be able to help you, Miss Nolan, if you could just remember what happened that night in Mr. Clarendon's room. Well, that's just the trouble. I can't remember anything except seeing Guy's body across the room and the pistol in my hand. Where did you get the pistol? I've no idea, though the police assure me it's mine. I didn't know Guy was at Halliday's. I've never even been there before. And why would I shoot him anyway? We loved each other. There, there, Miss Nolan. <laughs> Stiff up a lip. Thank you. Miss Nolan, what is the last thing you remember before the room at Halliday's? Oh, hot cocoa in bed. I beg your pardon? Oh. Well, every night before I retire, my maid, Grace, brings me a cup of hot cocoa. How nice. Oh, yes. And before that? Well, before that, I dine with Dr. Trevelyan, as I do every Sunday evening. My sister, Loretta, is under his care. The doctor and I have become good friends over the years. He left at 10 o'clock, as he always does. May I ask, where did you first meet Guy Clarendon? Uh, at the country estate of Cornelius Oldwine in March. My sister, Loretta, was attending a party there. I suppose things got a bit out of hand because it seemed she dived into a fountain. She caught pneumonia and I had to go and fetch her home. Guy was also at the estate, and that's where we met. And he immediately began paying court to you? Oh, heavens no. Nobody seems to take much notice of me. I suppose that comes from having such a wildly attractive sister. That's why I was so surprised when he called a few weeks later. We began seeing a great deal of each other. We went on long carriage rides, had picnic lunches. It was all quite lovely. And then on the 5th of June, he declared his love for me and asked for my hand in marriage. I was so happy. I couldn't have killed him. How do you explain your presence at Halliday's? Well, I can't. It's just like the other two times. You've had memory losses before, but we... Yes, twice in the past month. The first time I found myself atop a horse in Hyde Park with no recollection of how I got there. The last thing I remember was having lunch with my sister, Loretta. Then there I was, atop a chestnut mare. How peculiar. The funny thing is, I'm terrified of horses. You mentioned there was a second time. Yes, a few days later, I met with my solicitor, Hiram Davenport. Then the next thing I know, I'm at the Newgate Street Station. I consulted my physician, Dr. Mason, and he was quite as baffled as I was. One last question, if you will. What is your relationship with Gerald Locke? Oh, Jerry, he's a dear old friend. Though I'm afraid we had a falling out of late. He said some very unkind words about Guy. Okay, so it looks like um, she probably, yeah, got drugged by her sister, Loretta, who's the fancy one, and who also, by the way, probably went to then visit. Um, she was the, probably the other visitor to uh, Guy Clarendon. 
that was named. Um, Because, yeah, one of the incidents was that, although it also happened that when she was at Hiram Davenport, the solicitor, and this one, who was the, oh, Dr. Fervelian. Let's write some names down here. Fervelian, uh, maybe it started with a V. Uh, I don't know what this doctor's name is. Fravelian? Let's try R. I thought I heard Fravelian, but I don't see Finsterwald. I guess we can quickly scroll around here for this name. Who was her? Who, the doctor of Loretta who got the pneumonia. Fravelian. Um, G, H, I, J, K, oh, maybe PH, that's a good idea. No, not there. Pentonville Prison. Off. Oh, there's Cornelius Oldwine. I remember his name from before. Sneeze. Maybe he's just not important, so maybe we just don't end up visiting him. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, it was Dr. Percy Trevelyan. Percy Trevelyan. Like, Al what was it? Al Alec Trevelyan was in, um, was it Goldeneye? Was that his name? Okay, sorry about that. Um, can we visit, can we revisit Locke or no? I mean, would you ever go to his place? Okay, Gerald Locke, yeah, you could. All right, let's see what he has to say. We have just a few more questions for you, Mr. Locke, if you don't mind. Of course not. Anything to help Francis. We were wondering if you could shed some light on Miss Francis' relationship with Guy Clarendon. He was only after her money. And I tried to tell Francis as much, but she wouldn't hear of it. We had a bit of a row over it. I've been quite upset about the whole thing. Upset enough to commit murder? What an outrageous accusation. It was only a question, Mr. Locke. Preposterous. Besides, I've been on holiday all week, playing cribbage at the annual tournament up at Leeds. Sounds positively riveting. Oh, it was. Cribbage, eh? In Leeds, not Sir... Oh, Sir Sanford Leeds is probably the husband of a woman who was... Uh... Locked up. Okay. Can we can we uh, validate that alibi? It wasn't under L or C. So anyway, I guess we'll look for it if we have the uh, if we have the option. All right. So should we find out more about Guy Clarendon? Maybe from his relative or something? Oh, I keep on forgetting to look at this. He's the son of Sir Francis Clarendon. Okay, A.K.A. Frank. This is a difficult thing for a man to say about his only son. But Guy was a wastrel and a ne'er-do-well. Only a short month or so ago, I gave him 5,000 pounds and told him that was the last he'd see of my money. I'd hoped the shock would bring the boy around, make him realize he had to settle down instead of wasting his life on gambling and gallivanting around with that wild woman. Which wild woman was that? Loretta Nolan, of course. You mentioned gambling, Sir Francis. Have you any idea with whom he gambled or who might have wanted to kill him? I wish I did. He told us nothing. He only came around when he needed money. And when I told him there'd be no more, we never saw him. Just about broke his mother's heart. <laughs> there, there, Gertie. We still have one another.
Moments later. I've something you ought to know about Master Guy. One morning, rather early, about four or five weeks ago, I heard a terrible clatter downstairs, so I came down to investigate. It was Master Guy just coming home. He was in a terrible state, all battered and bruised, with a fresh cut on his forehead. I asked him who did it to him, and he wouldn't say. I think he was afraid for his life. Okay, so probably because of uh, his gambling. Probably. Okay, so that confirms that he was having the affair with the sister, Loretta. And he's probably, although, big reason why he didn't just try to marry Loretta. <laughs> if he liked her and he could get the money that way. Interesting. Shall we talk to Miss Loretta Nolan now? I believe we shall. Here's Loretta Nolan. Uh, Francis and Loretta Nolan are the only surviving heirs of Sir Malcolm Nolan, founder of the Aberdeen Navigation Company. Okay. I remember there was navigation, but... Oh, okay, it's Aberdeen, not Nolan. Uh, on November 18th, 1868, their parents, Sir Malcolm, with an L, and Lady Nolan were killed when an avowed anarchist, Zagreb Yoblinski, hurled a bomb into their carriage. He mistakenly thought the carriage was transporting the Duke of York. Miraculously, Loretta Nolan, age four, was uninjured. Okay, hang on. So, mistaken identity for Duke of York. Uh, bomb thrown by Zagreb Yoblinski. Yeah, damn, 650,000 pounds. So like a million dollars or something, that's crazy. Okay, and that was 11-18-68. Okay. Oh, let's, might as well do this for Francis Nolan, too. Oh, it's Francis with an E. Yeah, because I think Francis with an I is the male version, right? So, Francis. Should be Frances. Replace all. Thank you. Okay, um... Hello. Younger sister of Loretta Nolan. Okay, that's all. That's all you have. So it seems early in the early going, it seems like the sister is being uh, set up and such. Yeah. Hey, penny. And the farthing was a quarter penny. Well. Wow. Enter and be recognized. <laughs> oh, you don't wish to play Her Majesty, eh? Very well. You do not seem particularly disturbed by the recent turn of events, Miss Nolan. Each of us grieves in his own way, Mr. Holmes. It must be difficult for you to face the possibility that your own sister may have killed your dearest chum. Guy was fun to be with. And as for Frances, I love her dearly, but, well, it's funny to think Miss Right and Proper has finally gotten herself into a bit of a jam. Miss Nolan, may I ask, when was the last time you saw Guy Clarendon? Let me think. I believe it was the Richmond's party last Thursday. Yes, I'm sure of it. God, we did cut it up a bit there. <laughs> and after the party? We did not go home together, if that's what you're implying. That would have broken Francis's heart. She was head over heels for Guy, you know. She had some foolish notion that he was going to marry her. Not that someone like him ever would. But I do recall her saying, and it might have been the night of his death, that she was going to have a talk with him about their future. Okay, said so, uh, so Francis said she would have talked with him about their future. All right. Interesting. Can we go to the Richmonds to find out more about this party? There is an Otis Richmond here, yes. Although before we do that, we probably, we should probably see the regulars. Um, all right, so let's go back. I'm wondering whether we should talk to... Um, 
anyone involved with the society who had been. By the way, so the 5,000 deposit makes sense why, why he withdrew. Actually, this kind of doesn't make sense. Look at this. So this is weird. May 30th, you deposit something on June 1st, but then the prior day you had withdrawn it. This isn't even written chronologically, which is weird. I'm assuming the 5,000 was the 5,000 that was given to him by his dad, right? So it looks like any time he deposits, any time he deposits something, he or any time he withdraws something, he deposits this right back the next day. You'd think it would be the reverse, if anything. So that's weird. Yeah, 12 to the 13th, 16 to the 17th, 18 to 19. Interesting. Okay. So we could we could talk to the victims of the we probably should start with um, the victim um, leads the lady who was sent to uh, I guess hospital right do we have any other names holidays uh, friends no oh, yeah West London cricketers maybe get background information on guy um, yeah this is probably Loretta. Who's a woman visitor? We don't know who the man visitor was with the walrus mustache, so we have to keep an eye out for that. Um, it's not the jewel prices now. Um, we saw the dad. We went to Old Bailey. By the way, out of curiosity, do you have Yablinski as a? No, you can't. <laughs> you can't visit the guy who killed the parents. With the bomb. Yeah, there is the doctor we can also view, visit. Probably should. All right, let's 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 see leads. Let's see leads. We can see that thread. Yeah, the walrus mustache. Oh, buys just opened, actually. Why don't we pause for buy? I think we were going to check in on um, leads. So she went to the hospital, but we can check in with the husband, and maybe he can tell us where she is at, the, which hospital she's at. The tiara was a terribly valuable piece of jewelry, and it meant so much to my wife. She had been under a doctor's care since the theft. In fact, just yesterday she took a room at the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is she prone to bouts of nervousness? Mm, perhaps lately it seems so. She was absolutely undone when young Clarendon poured champagne down the bodice of her gown at Richmond's party. Come to think of it, that was the last time she wore her tiara. She was so proud of it. And several of the ladies at that party admired it openly. Where did Lady Leeds keep the tiara when she wasn't wearing it? In the bottom drawer of her bureau, where she kept some of her more frilly undergarments. Were there any signs of a search? Drawers left open, that sort of thing? No, and that's what strikes me as so peculiar. It's as if the burglar knew right where to look. He did, he did. By the way, so that's the same actor who played um, Merrill Fenwick, I think was his name, in the first in the first case. Remember, he was the guy that was telling his wife to shut up and didn't like her dog and everything. That was the same actor. Yeah, he was pri he was privy to her undergarments. He knew all about it. What was it? He poured champagne or something down her dress. I'll just say wine. Probably doesn't matter what the liquid. Oh, I mean, it could have been sherry. Mm. Yes, those frilly, frindy, alert, frindy, frilly undergarments. Okay. Um, let's see now. I probably should have that going. So we got a little bit. We don't know what hospital she went to, though. So it doesn't sound like we're going to be talking to her because there aren't there multiple hospitals here. I think there are. Oh, I need to give out a Cedric for going to another right location. It's probably a good time. Yeah, there are a bunch of hospitals. They're not even listed under H. It's probably a good time to talk to our regulars now for more information. So Lestrade's probably going to be useless, but, you know, we have to do it. Um, let's go here. You can only drag so many actors off the average street corner. Sure enough. What's happening here? It's a little bugged. Lestrade. Why even trouble yourself with this one, Holmes? You believe Francis Nolan to be guilty? <laughs> guilty as a cat would swallow a canary. And on what do you base that brilliant deduction? Look, 
Francis Nolan claims not to have known that Clarendon was residing at Halliday's. Yet she proceeded directly to his room where she shot the bloke. She claims not to have owned a gun. Yet the gun found in her hand was purchased at S. Goff and the receipt had her name on it, for Christ's sake. No, that little lady will never see the light of day again. Okay, so we learned purchase pistol at S. Goff. Or maybe it's with an E, S. Goff, like that. We probably should check that name. See if that's like a store. So she's probably like under some sort of entranced spell or hyp hypnosis or something. Probably hypnosis. Okay, I don't see anything there. Uh, by the way, uh, Soviet on Twitch, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Uh, try S. New. G for Goff. Oh, there's S Goff, yeah. All right, let's follow up on that. Do you remember a woman who came in recently and purchased a Derringer? Oh, matter of fact, I do, sir. We don't get women in here very often, especially not alone. And I particularly remember that one because she was so pretty and uh, she looked like she really knew how to have a good time, if you'll pardon the expression. Do you remember her name? I should say I do. She repeated it twice whilst I was filling out the order form. Seems like it was very important to her that I get her name right. Let me see, it was um, Francis, no, uh, less, uh, well, well, it was Francis something or other, sir. All right, so it looks like the sister Loretta is setting her up by buying the pistol. So now we probably just need to, uh, let's actually get, you know what, since that's like a key bit of evidence, we probably should get a save here too. Very good, very good. All right, so we got hat. Gun, book, umbrella. Gun, book, umbrella. Okay. All right, very good. Um, who do we want to visit next? Uh, medical, uh, probably the medical examiner. Let's get some crime scene information. Sir Jasper Meeks. You're quite sure the murder weapon was a small caliber pistol? Quite. I'd also wager to say he'd been shot at very close range. Ghastly. Tell us, Sir Jasper, at what time did you receive the body? Uh, around uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. And how much time would you judge to have elapsed from the time of the murder? Well, it's always difficult to be precise in these matters, but I'd venture to say he'd been dead anywhere from four to ten hours. Okay. What time did, um, what's his name say that she arrived? I think nine, right? What time did she arrive at the place? Oh, I think that would be here. Yeah, nine. So yeah, there's no chance that she killed, well, she didn't kill him at that time because there might've been a bang, but he had already been dead too long because, uh, unless they, he, she get, they killed exactly at nine, but that's very, Unlikely. All right, very good. Now let's go to Murray, who's the uh, other guy. H.R. Murray. <clears throat> Sleeping. Uh, I say, excuse me, Dr. Murray. Oh, hello. What? Oh, my, I must have dozed off. Ah, it's you, Whitson. And what are you doing with yourself this afternoon? Or is it evening already? Have a missed my tea. It's Watson, sir. We're looking into the Clarendon case, and we were wondering... The Clarendon? Ah, I just finished that report when I dozed off. Let me see. Number 301, I believe. Ah, yes. Here it is. Hmm. Number 103. Clarendon guy. But not much, I'm afraid. A hole in the shirt where a small caliber bullet passed into the body. Extensive blood stain. Uh, powder burns indicating a close range shot. Ah, here's something interesting. On the lower part of the shirt, I found traces of alcohol. Uh, wine, to be exact. Now, I have a good nose for this sort of thing, and I believe it to be an inferior quality Italian red. All 
All right, interesting, interesting. We've got some Italian red wine. Okay. All right, let's see what we want to talk to next. Um, I guess the, the Gossiper is always good. Langdale Pike. It appears as though Guy and Loretta, the terrible twins, will afflict us no more. Loretta must be desolate, what with the loss of a kindred spirit and fellow prankster. Prankster? Well, yes, my good fellow. I'll never forget the time. Clarendon poured champagne down the front of Lady Leeds's new Paris gown for the sole purpose of Loretta's amusement. I would think she must also be distraught at the loss of her lover, not to mention the imprisonment of her sister. Well, I'm not sure about Loretta's feelings toward her sister, but I do know that Guy and Loretta were not lovers. Though outwardly they made an excellent couple. He, tall, handsome, and from a moneyed family, and she, beautiful, and an heiress in her own right. Yes, it would have been a match made in heaven. But it was a match made in far hotter regions, I suspect. Francis claims that she and Clarendon were engaged to be married. Well, that's hard to imagine him being who he is. Or was, as it were. Why do you say that? Well, Guy Clarendon was not at all a desirable sort. He'd all but been disowned by his own father for his compulsive gambling. The utter disregard for other people's money is probably what drew Clarendon and Loretta Nolan together in the first place. After all, she had managed to fritter away almost her entire fortune, unlike her sister Frances, who still had her inheritance, if not her honor, intact. Oh, that explains it. What are you driving at, Holmes? From all I've heard of Clarendon, I suspect his interest in Frances was directed toward her sizable bank account. I already knew that. <laughs> He's like just okay. So, so Loretta probably just wants to inherit Francis's thing since she already spent her own stuff. I was surprised to find out they weren't actually uh, lovers, though. They were just like drinking buddies. Like what the hell? Interesting. So maybe that explains also why she doesn't care if he dies. Basically, she just found Guy as a way to uh, get Francis out of the picture by framing her. So we still need to figure out what's the whole deal with the drugs, though. How she got or hypnotized. Yeah, if not for gossip, there'd be no case, right? Gotta love the gossipers. All right, should we see Quentin Hogg, the crime reporter? I think so. Well, the Clarendon murders look fairly open and shut, if you ask me. Not your typical murderers, I admit, but there you have it. Okay, so he has nothing to add. Should we check in with the newspaper reporter, Henry L or editor, Henry Ellis? Well, Watson, will Ellis see us now? Not likely, Holmes. He's on assignment in Istanbul. No, oh, I see, I see. Okay. Uh, let's check the records house with wills and all that. So maybe we can tie um, what happens to uh, Francis's money if she's in prison rest of her life it seems sir malcolm left his entire estate to his wife margaret if she should precede him in death or accompany him as proved to be the case yes uh, then the estate was to be equally divided between his two daughters francis and loretta the estate included a one-third share in the aberdeen navigation company mm. yeah we may need to visit there okay it didn't really tell us too much new that we didn't know is the aberdeen navigation company an option by the way it is not. What about N? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's talk to O'Brien, who's the other records guy. Clerk. Both Loretta Nolan and Guy Clarendon have had several complaints filed against them, although neither of them has ever been arrested. Both have been cited for public drunkenness. Likewise, both have been involved in some unusual pranks, but no one has ever pressed charges. Okay, so they're generally a little bit of uh, some rapscallions, indeed. All right, so maybe we go to Old Wine to figure out about... That's where they met, at Old Wine's estate. We can get some more intel on them there, maybe. Since we're here on O. Poor old guy. He could be such fun. I'll never forget what a jolly good time we had the night he climbed the fountain at my country estate. How acrobatic. You don't know the half of it. It all started with Loretta, it seemed those things always did. Anyway, someone dared her to jump into the fountain. 
It being March and quite chilly, no one actually thought she would. She did the one better. She jumped straight in and swam to the center, where I have this absolutely dreadful sculpture with a lot of fat water nymphs. It rises some 20 or 30 feet in the air. She climbed it, though. The woman must be part monkey. Then she dove in. After that, it seemed to be the thing to do, so everybody took the plunge. I was the only other one who actually climbed to the top of the fountain, though. By the end of the weekend, half my guests came down with sneezes. Loretta caught pneumonia. Okay, didn't tell us that much. We kind of basically knew the basics there. Although I think, didn't Guy get pneumonia too at one point? Eh, it was going taku. All right, so that's Cornelius Old Wine. Um, or Cornelius, yeah. Okay, the other person, uh, I kind of wanted to go to the Cricketers to see if we can get any background on Guy. West London Cricketers, yeah. Not there, no. They had absolutely no information pertaining to this case. I thought not, Watson. It appears that we've wasted our time. Uh, to be honest, Taco, I'm kind of disappointed with it because Dracula Unleashed, which was also an FMV game by ICOM, released the following year in 92, just was a lot more interesting and uh, lively and had, like, the gameplay was much more sophisticated. This seems very... Basic. I mean, the second case was probably it was better than the first case, but the fact that you can only get one video per each um, uh, each person that you visit, and it doesn't matter in which order you visit it, it's like very basic, overly so. I probably would like it more if I hadn't played Dragon Unleashed first, but I'm, I'm I came in thinking it was going to be like that. It's just not at all. Um, it's just very. It just seems overly simplistic. Um, in fact, for fun, when we beat the second case, we did it again and did the entire case start to finish with the best possible score in like two, literally two minutes. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I mean, you know, the FMV is kind of fun, but it's not as, it's not as like uh, cheesy, you know, uh, Dragon Leash just had a lot more great moments in it. All right. Um... So we're not going to get any more uh, information on the cricketers. We should we should probably try. Have we visited everybody? All the regulars? I think we. Oh, not Shinwall. Okay, he's the only one. Oh, in the library. See what they say at the pub. Sure, I remember Clarendon. He and his lady friend used to stop in here from time to time, usually on their way to Kilgore's gaming parlor or coming back from it. Rumor has it, Clarendon was in to kill Gore for a sizable sum. Do you happen to know how much? Seven thousand pounds was the figure I heard. Got to the point Kilgore wouldn't allow him in the door. Clarendon made a big fuss till Gus Bullock stepped in. Clarendon backed down pretty quick. Don't blame him none. Nobody in their right mind would want to mess with the likes of Gus. Do you think Bullock was involved in the murder? Nothing you could tell me about that bloke could surprise me. Anyways, Kilgore makes it clear to Clarendon that he wants his money. Then, a month or so later, Clarendon comes in all smiles, and he and Kilgore getting on like chums. Figure Clarendon must have paid him back. Then, Calvin Leach steps into the picture. Now, who's Calvin Leach? Leach deals in what you might call Stolen property. Square dealer, too. Give you one half the value of the article. What does Leach have to do with Clarendon and Kilgore? Usually nothing at all. But there it is. Leach, Kilgore, and Clarendon meeting late at night just as thick as thieves. The meetings continued on right up to, well, the night before Clarendon's death. Very interesting. Now, we've been standing here jawing, and I don't recall hearing anybody order nothing. What'll it be, mate? Yeah, Sherlock. <laughs> have a drink, have a drink. Yeah, that's right, Cora. This is more kind of straight-laced. I, I guess, yeah, if it's a faithful conversion of the game, then you can sort of understand it, I suppose. But if so, it just seems, I mean, I guess the novelty was just that it was FMV at all, especially, you know, this early, 91. But yeah. You would have hoped for like a little bit more than just these standalone scenes like this. And there's like no like, yeah. 
dependent logic at all. All right, so let's follow up on this Kilgore, because now we have, I mean, we already have Loretta Nolan as one suspect, and we hadn't really had any other possibilities up until now. So maybe let's focus on the gambling debts, see if we can... Let's go visit Claude Kilgore at the gambling parlor. Uh, Kilgore served three years at Pentonville Prison for illegal gambling, was cellmates with James Ryder's friend Maudsley. Well, who's James Ryder? First of all, yeah, okay. Kilgore first. Any luck? Yes and no. I beg your pardon? Yes, Kilgore has met Clarendon once or twice, but no, he insists he's never heard of Calvin Leach. And you believed him? Okay, what was his friend's name? Maudsley? Maudsley. James friend of James Ryder. Who are they? Is James Ryder uh, an option here? So we can't even go to that gaming parlor. Okay, James Ryder's not here. I don't know what the making a big deal about him for. All right. Uh, can we see Leech? I guess we do need to get out of Cedric because we were able to get something on the case. Okay, Calvin Leech was implicated in a number of jewelry thefts, but he's never been convicted. So not only did he fence it, but he also stole too. What did you learn of Calvin Leach? I think Porky Shin will set it all. Did you ask Leach about Clarendon? Yes. What did he say, Watson? Oh, yes, of course. He said he'd never heard of him. Uh, okay. So Kilgore says he hasn't claimed of Leach, and Leach claims hasn't heard of Clarendon. What the hell? Okay. Hmm. It's just strange how they, but it would advance in sophistication so much from Sherlock to Dracula Unleashed. And they did also port Dracula Unleashed to DVD players too, so that worked. Oh, James Ryder was a character in one of the short stories. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. All right, so interesting. You didn't, we didn't get much information there. Bradford Lewin sounds familiar. Let's review our notes for where to go next. Um... We could try, I'm actually curious, do they have, oh, here he is. So this is another one of the victims. So we could try going to these guys, see if they give us any information what was stolen from them. Uh, Bradford Lewin was educated at Oxford University, now advises the Queen on foreign affairs. Wow, that's a pretty big deal. Big shot, Bradford Lewin. We were at a reception at Buckingham Palace for the new head of the China delegation. Upon arriving home, my wife discovered that her favorite ruby earrings were missing. We noticed nothing else out of place. No sign of a search, that is. And none of the servants had heard anything suspicious. Yeah, it's weird. We have to account for how the thief always knows directly where to go. We haven't yet explained that. All right, so I suppose, yeah, we should check all of the, the jewelry victims. So we also have an R. Baker, Roger Baker. Nothing on file for him. Well, it was an unfortunate event, but to tell you the truth, to me, it was a, a mere bauble, a trinket. I had it replaced for my wife the very next day. And nothing else was stolen? Not a thing, and it appeared there'd been no search. That's the same actor who played the uncle of um, Arnaud in the last case. Okay, so maybe he's stealing, the, maybe he's only taking one of these things because he's stealing it not for profit, but for Loretta? Nah, I don't know, like that. All right, anyway, we'll see. Let's continue viewing these guys. So that was Baker. Uh, let's check um, Hardinge, HC Hardinge. A distributor of excellent Harris tweeds in the London area. He moved back here in 1886 after residing for several years on the Hebrides Island of Lewis with Harris. What? My wife and I were guests at a small dinner party at the home of Otis Richmond. We arrived home sometime after midnight. 
And as my wife was putting away her finery, she noticed the bracelet was missing from her jewelry box, and we summoned the police immediately. The servants were questioned? Oh, they've all been with us for a number of years, and I haven't the slightest suspicion about them. But yes, the police did question them thoroughly. All were in bed asleep by the time we arrived home, and none heard anything untoward. And nothing else was taken? Surprisingly not. Yet you are positive that the bracelet has not simply been misplaced? No, my wife actually put it on while she was preparing for the evening, and then she decided against it. I saw her put it back in the box. Where does she keep the box? In her dressing table, there's a special compartment in the side of it. The box fits in rather neatly. Okay, so she went to the same uh, Richmond party. That's probably where uh, the bur uh, burglar, probably guy, Clarendon, heard about it. We, we will see. Oh, and Richmond himself also had a theft. We definitely need to see Otis Richmond. Uh, Otis Richmond is a self-made millionaire. His entire fortune comes from his railroad company holdings. He's retired, and these days he spends most of his time playing cribbage. So there's the overlap with Clarendon and giving lavish parties. At first, I thought it must have been one of the servants. After all, there was no sign of a search, and nothing else was disturbed. Did you question them? Thoroughly, but none of them would admit a thing. It really wasn't until Hardinge and Bessie Durth were robbed and the newspapers referred to us as victims of the society burglar that I was certain it wasn't any of my staff. By the way, can you recommend a good housekeeper and valet? <laughs> he fired them? Wow. Okay. All right, let's check Durth. Uh, I think Durth. Oh, Durth and Judd we still need to see. Durth and Judd. Bessie Durth. Uh, wife of the late Hiram Durth, who made his fortune harvesting diamonds from the mines of South Africa. Oy, yikes. Uh, Durth was in partnership with Sir Francis Clarendon. Oh, really? My husband, God rest his soul, gave me that necklace for our 50th wedding anniversary. And woe betide the blighter that took it, I say. I can certainly understand your consternation, madam. May I assume that you were out the evening it was taken? Oh, yes. The house was completely empty. Sibyl, my housekeeper, and I were attending a mass charity ball at St. Mary's for the benefit of unwed mothers. It wouldn't surprise me if that scoundrel was responsible in that direction as well. Society burglar, indeed. He's of the lower classes, mark my words. Do you keep your jewels locked up? Oh, I keep them in a very secret place. A box made to look like a copy of Great Expectations on the bookshelf amidst the other books. Hiram, my late husband, thought of that. But the thief went right to it. Okay. We should have asked, okay, did you discuss that at the, the St. Mary's Ball party? But I don't know why we didn't. Uh, Viva de Fruit, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Adventure Quest. All right, Nancy Judd. Nothing on file for her. It's all quite upsetting, you know. The pendant belonged to my great-great-grandmother, and I was hoping to pass it on to my daughter. And now it's gone. There, there, Mrs. Judd, you mustn't worry. With Holmes and I on the case, we're sure to recover your pendant. Uh, by the way, where did you keep it when you weren't wearing it? In the toe of my old black button-ups. And I don't recall ever having mentioned that to anyone. Or at least I don't think I did. What, did she sleep with Guy Clarendon? See, like, we should be able to follow up on this stuff, but it sucks that you can't. Huh. All right, so it looks like we've... Oh, there's also the Duchess of Oldenburg. Can we go to O, see if that's an option? Uh, hello? Can't. The heck? Oh, J. Why am I clicking on L? Okay, there, no, there's no Oldenburg. Uh, can you go to D? No, no Duchess. Okay, oh, Rhine Residence Schloss. We should try that too, just to make sure. No. Oh, Wilfred Robarts, that's, the, that's her lawyer. A noted London barrister, he tends to win more of his cases through courtroom theatrics rather than hard presentation of the facts. <laughs> Wendy old bag, oh God. Have you ever met Miss Frances Nolan? Only briefly. She wishes me to take her case. And have you decided? Actually, I'm quite up to my ears in several other pressing cases already. Oh, 
Anything I might have heard of? Oh, probably. Cornelius Oldwine is suing the sculptor who absolutely butchered his statue of Aphrodite. Oh, how terribly unnerving. You know, I once commissioned a painting Not of Aphrodite. Now, Watson, I think we'd best be going. Okay, so he's not even taking a case. So he's working for old one instead. Interesting. Actually, not that interesting. Okay, so let's review. Who else can we visit here? We saw all of the regulars, right? Library. Oh, we didn't go to the library. We should check if there's anything there. The London. Look, look some stuff up. The Mesmer Braid Institute was founded in 1874 as an asylum for the mentally disturbed. Oh, perhaps she's a bit of a loony. Quite so. The institute was named after the 17th century Austrian physician Anton Mesmer, who first discovered a technique whereby he could induce a quiet, trance-like state in patients. Sounds suspiciously like hypnosis. Actually, he called it mesmerism. It says that he ascribed certain mystic qualities to his process, and so was largely discredited during his lifetime. In the 1840s, Dr. James Braid, an Englishman, became interested in Mesmer's work, refined the process, and renamed it hypnotism. Right you are, Holmes. All right, so, yeah, hypnosis. So whoever went to Mesmer Braid is probably the person responsible for, uh, it's probably Francis, or uh, not Francis, Loretta, I mean. Let's see if we can go there and sneeze. Yeah, bingo. Okay. Uh, found in 1874, the Mesmer Braid is an asylum for the mentally disturbed, named after the 17th century Austrian physician Anton Mesmer, who first discovered his techniques in learned hypnosis. What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing? Don't get testy, Holmes. There wasn't anyone about. My humble apologies, Watson. Damn. Okay. So we can't understand who went there. Um, all right, that's too bad. But at least we now we know like the method. All right, let's see. Um, let's look for our next place we haven't gone. Clarendon. Oh yeah, St. Mary's Ball with Sybil the housekeeper. Can we go to St. Mary's? We have St. Bart's, but not St. Mary's. Hmm. Okay. Um, Oh, I didn't spell, misspelled foe. Uh, Nancy Judd. This needs to be there. Lady Leeds, Smoke Bomb. Oh yeah, that, these these uh, suspects. So this other thing might just be not irrelevant. Helmer Schnitzler, Thomas O'Neill. These suspects. Yeah, you can't even visit them. Editorial, oh yeah, HTB. Do we know anyone with those initials? Who wrote that editorial? We have HCH, Roger Baker, HTB. Don't think so. Okay, uh, we saw Gerald Locke. I was looking for a cribbage place, but there's not an option for that. We went. We tried the West London Cricketers. We've been to Halliday's. He was a fencer too. So we still don't have any idea about, the, oh, the scar on the wall or some stash. If we could actually see Leech and or Kilgore, we could actually maybe connect it there. It's probably someone from that place, but we couldn't see anyone there, which kind of sucks. Um, Claren didn't always ruin his room by 10. Canvas shoes. Yes, that probably means like sneakers, so he could go undetected. So we're pretty sure Clarendon is the um, burglar. Burglar. Um, the avions up the trellis. That's probably the mode of entry into his room. We haven't found any follow up on the inferior Italian red wine, though. Gus. Oh, yeah, Bullock. We have not tried Gus Bullock. There he is. Uh, Gus Bloodthirsty Bullock has served three separate terms for murder. He's a permanently reserved cell at Parkhurst Prison. Wow. So this is the guy who intervened when Clarendon was going after Kilgore at the gaming parlor. Who are you and what do you want? Dr. John Watson, sir. I wondered if you might be kind enough to answer a few questions. About what? <clears throat> guy Clarendon. 
That Welchin little weasel, what about him? He's been murdered. Ah! I'd say he got what he deserved. And if you don't clear out of here in two seconds, so will you. Oh, quite. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. <laughs> All right, I don't know. He didn't really look like a walrus mustache, so I don't know if that's our man. Probably not. Still, that was amusing. <laughs> I'm glad we saw it. Definitely didn't like the uh, questions. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, we have Calvin Lee. Uh, it's weird that you couldn't actually like talk to them. Um... And he keeps on being beat up by these people. So it's either, yeah, Loretta Nolan or the, um, and or the uh, gambling folks, probably. Um, the old Bailey we've been. Wilfred Robarts isn't even taking the case. Oh, yeah, her maid, Grace. We don't have a last name, though, unfortunately. Can we go to the... What if we go to Nolan? Can you go to the house? Would that be going to the house or going to prison? I think it would just be going to prison, right? No, no, I asked the maid. Who was at home on the evening of the first? Well, just Miss Francis, sir. Oh, yes, of course, and Dr. Trevelyan. At what time did the doctor take his leave? Oh, let me think. It. Oh, it must have been 10 o'clock because that's what time he always leaves. What did Miss Francis do after her guest left? What she does every evening, sir. Well, she asked for a cup of hot cocoa, which I brought her straight away. Then she read for a bit by the fire. Later, when I went up to bed, I passed her room and the light went out. What time would that have been? Oh, let me see. Oh, I know it was 11.30 because the clock chimed. Then I went to sleep. Later, I was awakened in the middle of the night, right in the midst of the most peculiar dream. You see, I was barefoot and trying to buy a pair of shoes. As fascinating and I... as all this is, could we get back to what it was that awakened you? Oh, yes, of course. Uh -huh. Well, it was something that I heard, or thought I heard. I listened for a bit. Well, that was the end of it, so I went to sleep again. Later, I awoke at 7.30. I always wake up at 7.30, except, of course, on Sundays when I sleep until 8. Mm. As usual, I began to prepare Miss Francis's breakfast. I had no sooner got into the kitchen when I heard the front door open and close. Well, I ran to the front window and peeked out, and there was Miss Frances walking down the street. And why do you deem that so unusual? Well, she never leaves before she's eaten one of my currant buns. Yeah, okay, so we know that she was uh, hypn uh, hyp hypnotized. I guess the no maybe the noise she heard was like initiating the hypnosis or something. Probably. Okay, we definitely need to see Trevelyan. That was the person I meant to saw, but we didn't get around to it. So that's the doctor who was dining. Uh, Dr. Percy Trevelyan was a practicing physician, oh, at Mesmer Braid. From 1878 to 1886, he specialized in treating neurosis through hypnosis. Mmm, so he might have initiated this. He currently conducts a private practice close to his home on Brook Street. Doctor. We understand that you dined with Francis Nolan on the evening of July 1st. Yes, that is correct. We dine every Sunday. Her sister Loretta has been under my care for some 10 years, first at the Mesmer Braid Institute and then in private practice. Without breaching physician-patient protocol, would you mind telling us the nature of her illness? She never quite recovered from the overwhelming trauma of watching her parents being blown to bits. I quite understand. As is often the case with young orphans, they tend to create fantasies about their parents. Miss Loretta Nolan truly believes that her father was the King of England, making her a princess. Do you think her unconventional behavior stems from that fantasy? Absolutely. As a princess, she believes she can do no wrong. I must say that she's worlds apart from her sister Frances. Do you know Frances Nolan well? Yes, rather. Through my treatment of her sister, I've known her for years. Let me say that it is difficult to believe that Miss Francis is capable of murder. She has a quiet, unassuming personality. An act of such direct confrontation would not be at all in keeping with her character. Were Loretta and Francis close? I know without a doubt that Miss Francis loves and cares for her sister, almost as a parent would a child. Miss Loretta, 
Well, she loves her sister as much as she is capable of love. Which is to say not at all. Okay, so probably Loretta did the hypnosis, which she learned while at the Mesmer Braid Institute. We know she bought the gun. So I probably planted it. Um, we know the we know the motive is to get the money. So probably all of the burglaries are probably like the big red herring, just the same way that the 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 Napoleon Tantin or the Waterloo Tantin League was all rubbish in the second case too. Um, I'm curious actually if we have enough evidence now to to actually go to the judge, but. Let's first see if we have any other per people we want to visit here. Um, Hyde Park. Oh, yeah. Hiram Davenport, the solicitor. We should check on that if we can't, if he's a character. Because she was with him, and then she got hypnotized there. So he might have in, in, insight into that. Uh, quite an overworked fellow. Specializes in setting up and administering estates. Never quite made the cut to barrister. Right. He's the solicitor. So, sorry to have kept you waiting, gentlemen. Mm. I assume you are inquiring about the Nolan girls. Yes, we are. How long have you been there, solicitor, Mr. Davenport? Actually, in practice, I am serving that function only for Francis. Loretta has not sought a word of my advice since she came of age and was able legally to get her hands on her trust fund. Had Loretta the presence of mind to follow my good counsel, I'm certain she would be in a far better financial situation today. Do you recall a meeting with Miss Francis last month when she blacked out? Well, I did have a very odd meeting with both Miss Francis and Miss Loretta several weeks ago. How so? Well, I wouldn't say she blacked out as such, but she did leave rather unexpectedly. We were in the middle of our discussion when I was called out of the office. I was gone not more than 20 minutes. When I returned, Miss Francis had a very strange look in her eyes. She mumbled something and promptly left. Miss Loretta laughed that very disturbing laugh of hers and departed as well. All right, so now we place her as the cause of the... Um... So now we can explain. So uh, we can explain how she went from Davenport to Newgate. The uh, She had lunch in Hyde Park, so we know that. She would have had the opportunity to initiate the hypnosis then. And then with the respect to the actual day of, she's probably like in the middle of the night when she came into their uh, house while uh, the maid was sleeping. All right. Hey, Dark. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, let's get another save. I'm curious whether we have enough evidence to just nail this on Loretta. Because honestly, if like the whole gambling th thread was something, we would have actually met with Leech and or Kilgore. But they didn't even bother filming, like, character scenes for that, which is sort of crazy. Ooh, we got a new uh, symbol here. Okay, so we got uh, mummy, globe, watch, or pocket watch, and cleaver. I feel like the cleaver means you're ready to sort of solve it or something. Uh, resume. Let's just see if there's anyone else going through our notes that we could uh, meet with or talk to. Okay, we saw Gus Bullock. Um, okay, we got the maid, we got Trevelyan, we got Old Wine, we saw Davenport, we saw Locke, we saw Goff. We saw Richmond. It's weird that we didn't ask about the party when we were at Richmond's. That's weird. I don't know. Maybe we don't even need the Baker Street or regulars here. We'll see. Um, we can't really explain the sherry as of yet or the cheap Italian red wine. But we may not need to. Okay, this whole Maudsley James Ryder thing is nothing. Okay. All right, yeah. I, I say we just go with it. We, uh, or I guess we could do one survey of the newspapers, maybe. Let's just let's just see. Well, yeah, I guess we should. Let's just do one more scan to make sure there's nothing. Now that we know all of the characters, that there's nothing that we missed, that would have been something. Um, 
Lions. Uh, probably the board game is better than this game, Dark. As I keep on saying, though, this game definitely pales in comparison to Dracula Unleashed. I enjoyed that one a lot more. Also by Icom in sort of a similar style, but way more complex. I just don't like that. I don't like that you can't find out information from one person, go to a second person, they tell you something else, and then you can go back. Like, there, you can only, there's only one video clip per location or character, which is, I don't know. I sped run the second case again in like literally two minutes. We only had to visit four locations, and then boom, it was done. Kind of silly. Okay. So we never find out who HLH. Oh, and one of the public is Little Egypt. Um, and the Oldenburg Jewels is nothing. Does it not also seem like his MO either? So this could just be a red herring. There's another jewel theft, but it's like totally different. Okay. And yeah, yeah, the newspapers probably are, if you actually had real newspapers. Okay. Um, so we're just doing one more scan before we try going to the judge. Because it seems like we're out of locations. I mean, unless I start sending the irregulars out, but that seems like a waste of time. Gen gen I mean, I get a nugget or two, actually, but I'm only going to do that if we turns out we don't have enough evidence. Okay, the Mason. Oh, this is the bugged thing. Queen and statue. Oh, we didn't mention um, there was that litigation. Not connected, apparently. All right, and then we need the fourth one. Oh, it's too close an adaptation? Well, how many cases does the board game have? Because I imagine if it's only got a few and you quickly exhaust the possibilities, it doesn't have much replay value if you already know the solutions, right? Okay, 14,000 pounds, seven victims. Is it really seven? I thought it was, oh, six plus the seventh was the leads. So yeah, it was Baker, Hardinge, Richmond, Lewin, Dearth, Judd, Leeds. Yeah, okay, so. So the other one is not a society burglar. And hospitalized by her physician. Yeah. Has all three cases from the three vol has all cases from three volumes. Oh, so ten cases? No with no replay value. Oh, and then two subsequent board game editions that came out. So you have 30 cases over the course of the three board games. I imagine it could still be fine. It's not a mul it sounds like it's not a multiplayer game though. Is it like a rare single player game? Board game, I mean? So I don't think we ever found out this HTB. Um, anyone with Bullock? No. Baker? No. Hmm. All right. All right, so we got to save. Let's just try going to the judge, see if we're right. Or see if we have enough evidence. We do. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court now stands in session. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking into the murder of Guy Clarendon. That is correct, my lord. Would you be so kind as to tell the court who killed Mr. Clarendon? Certainly, my lord. Certainly. Oh, by the way, I just want to get the dates of the two visitors that you received. You got the guy with the walrus mustache. What was the date of the, um, what's her name visiting Loretta? So July 2nd was the day of the murder, or really the, the night of. What was the date that he got the other one? Oh, they don't mention the date. Okay. Anyway, we're going with Loretta. Let's just see what the options are. <laughs> Irene Adler, Dr. Ainstree, Roger Baker, Flank Clan Randon, Godfrey Emsworth, Emily Garbo, Herbert Jacqueline, W. Kent Jordan, Calvin Leach, Gerald Mason, H.J. Nichol, Francis Nolan, Loretta Nolan, 
Isidore Persano, Otis Richmond. Wow. There aren't even really any options. I'm surprised they don't have, why wouldn't they have Kilgore? This one, all right, I could be dead wrong, but this one doesn't even seem even like remotely close like their other options. I see. And what was Loretta Nolan's motive for killing Mr. Clarendon? Okay, Loretta, uh, why did Loretta Nolan kill Mr. Clarendon? Loretta only meant to scare him as a joke. She thought the gun was unloaded. No. B, she was jealous of his relationship with her sister, Frances. No. C, she had her eye on the Cleopatra tiara. No. D, she was no longer in love with him. No. E, Clarendon had named Loretta in his will, leaving to her all his worldly goods. Oh. Hmm, actually, I don't like any of these. Well, we went to the records department. There was no mention of Clarendon's will. And anyway, he didn't even have that much money to begin with because he kept on gambling it. Um, what's the name? Said she, oh, that's not the, well, I thought the motive was um, to basically frame Francis for it so that she would go to prison. And then she, then she would get the money. Uh, so this is sort of strange. All right, maybe maybe I did miss some things because none of these. Oh, maybe okay, maybe maybe it was a prank and she actually did kill him. Okay, hang on, that could be it. I didn't consider that, but that doesn't mean it's not what happened. Because we do know she was a prankster. So then, yeah, when she killed him that night, she's like, "Oh shit, how do I, how do I get out of this?" So yeah, that 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 could have some legs to it. We know she. What, uh, she wasn't, they weren't lovers and she didn't seem that jealous. So yeah, uh, I guess that kind of makes sense. And maybe she had been hypnotizing Francis in the past, like kind of out of pranks. And she realized, okay, I can use that again to frame her instead. So I'll go with that. Pity, Mr. Holmes. Damn. I think you missed the mark on that one. Oh. You'll have to build your case again from the ground up. Oh, my, Holmes. I was so certain we had that one right. Too bad. I mean, it kind of sort of makes sense. Yep, by order of this court, you are summarily dismissed until such time when you can correctly and without fault present your evidence. Furthermore, for wasting the court's time, you are required to start your investigation over from the beginning. See, there's the death people are asking about. Should you decide you are close to a solution, you may exercise your right to reload a safe game, gather more clues, and present your findings once again to this court. Yeah, so, so I am surprised that... Uh, we didn't get the, uh, I thought she wanted to get what's her name's money because she, she had used her own inheritance and then she couldn't get, um, Francis's. So I am surprised. Okay. Mummy, globe, pocket watch. Uh, where's the cleaver? Cleaver. All right. I kind of want to rewatch the pike thing. Cause that's where they talked about, um, he mentioned uh, their relationship. I need more information. I want to review that. It appears as though Guy and Loretta, the terrible twins, will afflict us no more. Loretta must be desolate, what with the loss of a kindred spirit and fellow prankster. Prankster? Well, yes, my good fellow. I'll never forget the time. Clarendon poured champagne down the front of Lady Leeds's new Paris gown for the sole purpose of Loretta's amusement. I would think she must also be distraught at the loss of her lover, not to mention the imprisonment of her sister. Well, I'm not sure about Loretta's feelings toward her sister, but I do know that Guy and Loretta were not lovers. Though outwardly they made an excellent couple. He, tall, handsome, and from a moneyed family, and she, beautiful, and an heiress in her own right. Yes, it would have been a match made in heaven. But it was a match made in far hotter regions, I suspect. Francis claims that she and Clarendon were engaged to be married. Well, that's hard to imagine him being who he is. Or was, as it were. Why do you say that? Well, Guy Clarendon was not at all a desirable sort. He'd all but been disowned by his own father for his compulsive gambling. The utter disregard for other people's money is probably what drew Clarendon and Loretta Nolan together in the first place. After all, she had managed to fritter away almost her entire fortune, unlike her sister Frances, who still had her inheritance, if not her honor, intact. Oh, that explains it. What are you driving at, Holmes? 
From all I've heard of Clarendon, I suspect his interest in Francis was directed toward her sizable bank account. Okay, so the other possibility, is it possible that Francis actually did kill him, but she didn't kill him at nine. She killed him earlier than that. And that's why the maid heard noise in the middle of the night, and it was her leaving. And maybe she's doing it under the guise of her being hypnotized. Uh, although that wouldn't explain why Loretta bought the gun, but maybe she asked Loretta to do it. P possible. I mean, that would be the trick, the tricksy solution, for sure. And then maybe Francis's motive was that she figured out Guy was marrying her just for her money, and she was pissed about that. So that could be if she had found that out. Uh, who would have told her that? Maybe Guy. Uh, maybe Locke, but it didn't seem like she really cared about that. All right, I think we need to send out the irregulars to get a little bit more maybe intel here. <laughs> so you still think it looks 90s? Well, this is probably filmed in like 1990 itself or something. So let's send, uh, I kind of want to send, I don't think, it looks like the everything cold water being thrown in Kilgore and Leech, but let's send the irregulars there. Kilgore lives eye off the hog from the quid he rakes in from his city establishment. You need a, pa a password to get in there. Yeah, so it looks like it's just a big dead end with the gambling. Uh, and same thing with Leech, I'm guessing. Sorry, Gav. Now into Elm. Okay, what if we saw Nolan with these guys? Um, I don't know if this amounts to much, but we wager this dame is a bit of a rocker. If you heard the way she laughs, you wouldn't doubt it. Hmm. And she did have this, like, weird, I don't know, deranged madness thing going on. Uh, can we send her to send them to visit? Well, they're not going to really tell us much, but. Edward All told us there was no way the guards would let us near Francis Nolan. Kind of makes sense, actually. Okay, uh, who else do we want them to visit? Um, hmm, just to get a little bit more information. Uh, Hiram Davenport, Gerald Locke, Trevelyan, Percy Trevelyan. Larry Holmes didn't have time to dig into this one. <laughs> you didn't have time to write up a response is what, is what you didn't have time for. Okay, try uh, Richmond and Old Wine. There's that whole thing about them diving to the fountain they made such a big deal of. Wanted to know if any of us had any experience as man seven sets. A good one. And that we couldn't get a thing out of them. Okay. Um, yeah, it's probably not going to tell us anything. But. Old wine. No one was there. Maybe they heard we were coming and sneaked at the beck. Okay. <laughs> oh, 1890s, yeah. Okay, let's try Guy Locke. Or Gerald Locke, sorry. We didn't think we ought to disturb him. There was too much boo-hooing coming from behind his door. Oh, he's crying, huh? He wasn't even an option for the murderer, which is sort of weird. Okay. Um, who else could we get more intel from on this? I guess the victims of the... Although, how could we put Francis? Well, I guess we don't have to worry about the burglars, burglary so much, but. Can we see if they have anything to say about Dearth or uh, the others? Yeah, well, bag shoes us from our front steps, threatened us with a kind she did. Yeah, didn't, didn't expect him to say anything here, but. Wrong neighbor to send us into, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, then I can do the high society types. Makes sense. Okay. Well, I sent you after... Uh, I guess I'll send you after Bullock. I sent you after the other guys, but you didn't come back with anything. For a shilling, this good will kill his own mother. Can't swear he off Clarendon. Says he was roughing up someone else at the time. This goon kill his own mother. Wow. <laughs> Blame it on your non-existent cat. Always a good one, Marble. Always a good one. So we never met the large fellow with the scar and the walrus mustache. 
Or maybe we did, we just never saw Leech or Kilgore. Um... Pair of shoes. Hmm. Ivy vines up the trellis. We know she did drink. Okay. It would be pretty clever if they actually made Francis Nolan the actual murderer. Murderess. The fact that the case is actually called the mystified murderess. I guess it's a reference to Francis Nolan being mystified that she was accused of being the murderess. But yeah. All right. Uh, well, so we want to send them over to the Robarts Lar. That's going to be nothing. But we'll do it for fun. Wilfred. Clark says he might be too busy to take the case. Okay. So they're not coming up with anything new here. Uh, we should try Nolan to so talk to the housekeeper. Meg told us you could find Miss Francis locked up at the Old Bailey. Okay, oh, Davenport. Davenport, were we supposed to talk to Davenport? Sorry. I didn't, I couldn't even bother. Oh yeah, we can't go to Hyde Park, right? There's nothing in Hyde Park. Oh, there is Hyde Park. Let's see if there's anything there. That's where she uh, blacked out, right? Nothing. Sorry, Holmes, no information here. But well, let's not dawdle, Watson. There's work to be done. All right, all right. Mm, okay, so yeah, these... I don't know why they made such a big deal about these irregulars. They don't give us any new information. Guess we'll send them to Leeds, too. Yeah, they're not going to give anything about the victims. As they themselves told said, these people are not going to be receptive to them. No one was home when we went there. Maybe they oh, better luck. Beware the bulldog in the yard. Yeah. All right. So basically they're not telling us anything. All right, so I'm kind of curious... I'm kind of curious now, because I didn't like any of the motives. I mean, I reasoned my way into the prank one for um, Loretta, but um, I'm curious if you actually select Francis, is it immediately game over, or do they actually, uh, is it possible it could be her? Because I can sort of, I mean, I haven't looked at all of them, but if she did find out that guy was um, just after her for her money, that does give her a motive. And she clearly had opportunity. She would, have, and I could see a way in which she could sort of cover her tracks, and then the whole Loretta thing would just be like a smokescreen. Um, so I could sort of see that. Whoops! Shit! Cancel. Okay, was it Mummy? Globe. Pocket watch. Where's the pocket watch? Here. Cleaver. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court now stands in session. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking into the murder of Guy Clarendon. That is correct, my lord. Would you be so kind as to tell the court who killed Mr. Clarendon? I would not. Certainly, my lord. Your Honor, I would not be so kind. Yeah, I mean, there really are no other suspects here that could even possibly be. I mean, they're all just like generic NPCs or people we didn't even get to really meet. Otis Richmond, I mean, come on. So well, I'm curious, is this an automatic death or could it actually be Francis Nolan? Maybe. Sorry, Mr. Holmes, but my sources tell me no. you've chosen the wrong suspect. But sources. Unfortunately... I'm going to have to insist that you start all over again. Okay. So it is Loretta Nolan. We just picked the wrong motive. <laughs> My sources tell me, then why are we even in this court? Like, what the hell? <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird setup. Why aren't we proving stuff at trial? It's so, it's so weird. It's very strange. All right. So we're ruling out. So it's definitely a Loretta Nolan. Um... We just have to go to a different motive. Strange. All right, let's see. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court now stands in session. <laughs> the judge did. That's what I said earlier. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking into the murder of Guy Clarendon. That is correct, my lord. Would you be so kind as to tell the court who killed Mr. Clarendon? 
Certainly, my lord. My lordship. Loretta. So we should give I out see. a couple and for what was getting the right person Loretta earlier. Nolan's motive for killing Mr. Clarendon? All right, so we, before we didn't, well, the man up scam was a joke. She thought the gun was unloaded, which was a big prank. So I don't think she wanted to go after the, I mean, was the tiara the most expensive thing? I don't, she didn't seem like the type that would kill. I mean, I know she was mo motivated by money for sure, but to kill him for that seems like a bit of a stretch, but. Um, yeah, okay, it was worth 5,000. It wasn't the most. We don't think they were in love ever. We didn't see anything about it in his will, though. And wait a minute. If Clarendon had a... Oh, right. That kind of makes sense. But um, we didn't see that in his will. And again, he didn't have... And she couldn't, she couldn't legally inherit items which uh, he had stolen. So that's definitely... can't be E. So maybe she, yeah, she tells her the relationship... They said it was a match made in hell. That's what the goss uh, the Lang Langdell Pike said. So it looks like it's probably, we know it's not A. E makes no logical sense. We were told, I mean, wh why would she kill someone she wasn't in love with anymore? It doesn't make sense either as a motive. So really, we're talking about B or C here. Um, I mean, I guess there was a complicated relationship, but she didn't seem to be in love with him. So that's why I don't like either of these. So I'll be curious to see how Holmes explains it. Uh, we probably missed a few, maybe a scene or two, I guess. Maybe if we watched everything, it would make more sense. But um, I can't ignore the whole thing with Francis and framing her, so I think B is more likely. So let's go B. Pity, Mr. Holmes. Damn. Okay. I think you missed the mark on that one. Crap. You'll have to build your case again. From the ground up. Lord ground. Holmes, I was so certain we had that one right. All right. So we know she wants the money. So, man. I'm going to check the records to make sure we didn't miss something there. It's so strange. So is it mummy? Something pocket watch? Globe pocket watch. Okay. Let me check the records again, but I think it was just, we only got Malcolm's will. We didn't get Dab uh, Clarendon's. Pretty sure. No, the chat didn't do it, but we kept them joking that he had. <laughs> oh man, that, that was the worst judge ever. All right, so we need to go where? O'Brien? Oh, he said, no, O'Brien said there was no information, right? Both Loretta Nolan and Guy Clarendon have had several complaints filed against them. Yeah, it's just Although neither of them has ever been arrested. Both have been cited for public drunkenness. Likewise, both have been involved in some unusual pranks, but no one has ever pressed charges. All right, so let's try the Somerset House again. Yeah. That thing was only Malcolm Nolan's will, and they said it was just split between the, among the two of them. Hello, can I not change this? Come on. It seems Sir Malcolm left his entire estate to his wife, Margaret. If she should precede him in death... Or accompany him, as proved to be the case. Yes. Uh, then the estate was to be equally divided between his two daughters, Frances and Loretta, the estate included a one-third share in the Aberdeen Navigation Company. Yeah. All right. So there's nothing on that. So I don't think it's the... So I guess she did it for the money? I mean, we know she needed money, but still. So I guess she did it for the tiara? I don't know. Strange. I mean, we know we know how she did it. So I expect to be able to answer the, the subsequent questions, but I really hope it's not. You know what? Let's just do the interview with her again. I, I hope it's not, uh, again, like a newspaper article we're missing or something. That would be. Decisive here, as happened in the first case. And 
enter and be recognized. Yeah, here's the princess delusion. <laughs> oh. oh, you don't wish to play Her Majesty, eh? Very well. Whoa. You do not seem particularly disturbed by the recent turn of events, Miss Dolan. Each of us grieves in his own way, Mr. Holmes. It must be difficult for you to face the possibility that your own sister may have killed your dearest chum. Guy was fun to be with. And as for Frances, I love her dearly, but, well, it's funny to think Miss Right and Proper has finally gotten herself into a bit of a jam. Miss Nolan, may I ask, when was the last time you saw Guy Clarendon? Let me think. I believe it was the Richmond's party last Thursday. Yes, I'm sure of it. God, we did cut it up a bit there. <laughs> and after the party? We did not go home together, if that's what you're implying. That would have broken Francis's heart. She was head over heels for Guy, you know. She had some foolish notion that he was going to marry her. Not that someone like him ever would. But I do recall her saying, and it might have been the night of his death, that she was going to have a talk with him about their future. Mom! All right. So yeah, they didn't really give us any more stuffs. But actually, that kind of does support the notion if it had been uh, Francis that killed him. That she found out about something or what have you. But yeah. All right, shall we try that she wanted, to, she did it for money and she wanted the 5,000 5, pound tiara? Seems so weird though, but God. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court now stands in session. Mr. Holmes. I understand you've been looking into the murder of Guy Clarendon. That is correct, my lord. Would you be so kind as to tell the court who killed Mr. Clarendon? Yeah, Certainly, the, my lord. It's really bad, too. They, they should have stuffed the suspect list with actual people that we talked to. Just give us everybody that we met with in person during the game, not these random names like Emile G Gabriel and Wallace Ripley. So strange. All right, Loretta Nolan. I see. And what was Loretta Nolan's motive for killing Mr. Clarendon? All right, so we tried A and B. So let's go with uh, C. Clear patch chair. Again, this makes no logical sense. And at least we were told she was, no, she was never in love with him. So we know she was hard up for money, so it makes the most sense among the remaining options. Ah, uh, greed, pure and simple. Yes. Now, have you determined why Francis Nolan went to Halliday's? I have, my lord. Please inform the court. She was hypnotized. <laughs> it was Wallace Ripley. All right, why did Francis Nolan go to Halliday's? Dr. Mason told her it would help her bouts of memory loss. No, she didn't even meet with Dr. Mason. Wasn't Dr. Mason killed, Oswald Mason? B, she, yeah, she was hypnotized by her sister, Laura. Yes, B. C, Sir Francis Clarendon asked her to deliver some money to his son. No. D, Loretta told her that guy wanted to see her. No. E, Francis wanted to declare her love for a guy. No. Okay, she was hypnotized by her sister, Loretta. Not a sisterly thing to do at all. No, not at all. Is there anything else you wish to report to the court? Yes, yes love your Lord. week. I believe we've also solved the case of the society burglar. You don't say. I do. Who is the guilty party? Uh, by that would be Guy Clarendon. Guy Clarendon was straight from the upper crust. Why ever would he turn to a life of crime? Well, why wouldn't he? Okay, A, he owed money to Calvin Leach. B, his father cut him off financially. Well, both of those are actually correct. C, Loretta Nolan dared him to. D, he was an accomplice of Gus Bullock's. Or E, Kilgore insisted that he do it to pay off the debt. Oh, boy. So the problem with this is that we couldn't really... 
I tried to investigate this whole thread, but like it basically dead ends and you didn't even get in-person meetings with Leech nor Kilgore. Let's go to the notes that we do have though. Man. Uh So we know he owed money to Kilgore. We don't have any evidence that Kilgore insisted that he do it. We just, I mean, look, from Kilgore's perspective, just pay me the money. He's not caring how he gets the money. That doesn't make sense. Uh, we know Calvin Leach Dilton's stolen property. Do we know that he owed money to Leach? I don't think so. So we know, we know he owed money, but I think he owed money to, to Kilgore. We couldn't investigate anything that Kilgore insisted it. I mean, so the one thing that we do know of all of these is that the father cut him off. And that's the one thing we do know. I don't think we have a date on that, though. We know he gave 5000 but we don't have a date on that. So let's go with the one thing that we absolutely know rather than make assumptions, which we didn't get um, intel on. Cut or him off, cut, the father cut him off financially. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank this you. This was a difficult case. Thank you. On the contrary, my lord. It was elementary. That is what you think. Nonetheless, the good people of London are forever in your debt. We thank you. My pleasure, my lord. Well, Watson, we should be very pleased with ourselves on this one. Yes, indeed, Holmes. Two cases solved for Scotland Yard. Though I doubt that the Strahd will consider himself in our debt. Two? Yes, indeed. First, the society burglar. Clarendon was £7,000 in debt to the gambler Kilgore. Unfortunately, he was in his father's bad graces and he was flat broke. Do you suppose Kilgore sent Bullock around to rough Clarendon up? Good deduction, Watson. You're learning. That's why he moved into Halliday's, to escape Gus Bullock. And to pay off his debts, he took to burglary. Right you are. He acquired a black sweater, trousers, and a pair of black canvas shoes so as not to be seen or heard in the dead of night. He chose victims of his own class whose social comings and goings he knew well and whose homes he'd visited often. I still don't understand why, after he'd settled in at Halliday's, he changed rooms. Elementary, my dear Watson. To be at the back of the hotel with a vine-covered trellis conveniently leading in and out of his bedroom window. Quite so. Positively clever of you. May I continue? Oh, please do. On the 1st of June, Bullock tracked Clarendon down and confronted him in the lobby. Clarendon paid him the £5,000 that was given to him by his father. But he still owed Kilgore £2,000. And that was the same evening the society burglar struck for the first time. So pleased you've been paying attention, Watson. Soon after that, Clarendon, Kilgore and Calvin Leach, a known trafficker in stolen goods, were seen together. Notice, if you will, that one half the value of the first three society burglaries is equal to 2,000 pounds. Half the value being the price normally paid by Calvin Leach for stolen goods. Notice also that this same amount is equal to the balance of Clarendon's debt to Kilgore. Fascinating. So with his new vocation, Clarendon now had an easy source of income. Quite so, as his succeeding bank transactions evidence. On the day after each of the next three burglaries, Clarendon made deposits. Everything went along swimmingly, and by June 30th, his debt was paid. But the tiara was stolen July 1st. Yes, Watson. Apparently, young Clarendon thought he'd found himself a new vocation. He might have lasted longer at it if he'd chosen something else to steal. Whatever do you mean, Holmes? Loretta Nolan's delusion that she was born of royal parentage proved to be his undoing. If she took it, how did she manage? No one saw her enter or leave. She came and went the same way Clarendon did, via the trellis. She was armed with a derringer purchased at S. Goff's in her sister's name. Clarendon returned from his night's work and poured two glasses of wine in celebration. That's when Loretta Nolan shot him and took the tiara. How wicked of her. Not nearly as wicked as what she did next. What? She went to her sister Frances's home and hypnotized her. She then proceeded to instruct her to go to Clarendon's room with the derringer and fire it into the ceiling. Incriminate her own sister? But why? Ah, if we could determine that precisely, we could start our own institute. Sick mind, no doubt. But tell me, Holmes, how did Clarendon know the precise locations of each of his victim's jewels? Excellent question, Watson. Although there is no clear-cut evidence for this, I can only assume that Loretta Nolan must have been in on it too. 
The only way Clarendon could have known the locations of the jewels was if the victims themselves had told him where to look. None of them recalls having told anyone, but in fact they did tell someone. Who? Hip Loretta Nolan. They were hypnotized. She managed to hypnotize each of the ladies whose jewels were stolen and got them to reveal the precise locations of the family treasures. And left them with no memory of having done so. Precisely. Astounding, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> While your skill in solving the case should be lauded, I suggest brushing up on your deductive reasoning. Sorry. Even Dr. Watson could have done better than that. Ouch. And in much shorter time to boot. <laughs> Not as good as Dr. Watson. Okay. Well, there we have it. After seven hours and 38 minutes, Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective, has been consulted... He's arrested the three... Well, has he arrested? He told the judge the three different murderers. Three cases solved. And he'll be back again in volume two. Oh, man. So we got to give out seven Cedrics for the game, uh, taking seven plus hours. Uh, the interesting thing there in that final uh, scene when they were talking about it Watson asked um, what the motive was for Loretta hypnotizing her sister and, like, framing her. And then he said, oh, something like, oh, the, just a mystery we, we can't know. When Wasn't that the same question that was asked? <laughs> oh, I guess that's for why she killed Guy, not why they framed the sister. But anyway, that was strange. Hmm. Very strange. You expected more of the game in terms of uh, length, Shakai? It was weird because, like, it seems like Sherlock had a little bit more access to some information that we never got. It was weird that the Baker Street Regulars was basically useless in two of the three uh, cases. It didn't add anything. I don't, I don't know. So, yeah, I do, you know, overall, I much preferred of the two ICOM FMV games. I much preferred Dracula and Leash, just a lot more sophisticated and um, really cool. This was ultimately pretty simple in terms of the actual gameplay um i do like that each case was subsequently a little bit more complex it was stupid how like there weren't more uh <laughs> options to choose from as for the murderer like how did you not have Locke? like why didn't they throw more shade on gerald Locke? i mean he was the rival he was the rival suitor for francis nolan so he had a he had a motive to kill guy clarendon they never like explored that or gave any credence to that uh, oh, if I knew the answer to that, we could open our own institute. Yeah. Uh, if you remember the first case, they withheld the key bit of information for the motive was withheld from the newspaper, at least from this DVD player version. So there's no way I could get that. Um, the board game doesn't have the list. Oh, all the questions are open-ended. Yeah, that's probably... I mean, I know I understand they can't do that in sort of at least the DVD player version, but... You should have had at least relevant suspects instead of all these people whose names were never even mentioned. Why would anyone think of choosing them? So strange. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all in all, like, you know, keeping in mind the context of the game and when it came out, you know, as one of the first, like, you know, full, full-fledged FMV games, it's probably more of a technical novelty and would be kind of cool, you know, it doesn't have much replayability, and it's probably too much of a strict uh, interpretation of the board game on which it's based. So I will say it is impressive how ICOM really stepped it up in terms of gameplay with Dracula Unleashed, which was released the following year. That said, Volume 2 of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective was also released in 92, and I think Volume 3 in 93. Uh, we will see if they change the gameplay at all. My guess is they won't, or if they do, it's going to be very subtle. Uh, I wish there had been more involved with the Irregulars or some other way of getting evidence. I didn't like that you could only, every time you went to location, it was the same video. It didn't matter which in which order you visited places. It didn't matter if you collected additional evidence that would require you to then go back to the characters and ask different questions. Like, it would work better as, you know, most adventure games, uh, detective adventure games either do or then later did, where you actually choose what questions to ask and they're more like dialogue trees. So this is a little bit more simple. Uh, this is more simplified, and I think ultimately to the game's detriment. 
Oh, in the remaster, you have the entire directory to choose from. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So, yeah. Um, you know, cool for the time because there weren't like full FMV game, too many full FMV games like this in 1991 when CD ROM. Uh, supported uh you know computers and consoles were not that in broad adoption but wanted a little bit more from a gameplay standpoint so all that said let's head to our hall of adventure bookshelf number two we're gonna add game number 276 sherlock holmes consulting detective put that up on the list on the shelf i should say 